Welcome back to the show. Today we're talking about basketball IQ and what it means. Does it mean you know basketball really well? Does it mean you played basketball a lot? Does it mean you read a lot of books? Does it mean you know a lot about the NBA? Kind of, some of those things, but we're gonna break down the four different types of basketball IQ that I came up with. I made this up, this is all me. So let's talk about type number one. The first one is time management or score awareness. The simplest one is knowing when to foul at the end of the game. Most of the time teams know when to do this, but sometimes they mess it up. And they mess it up bad. If the team that is winning inbounds the ball and the shot clock is off, the other team needs to foul them lest the other team burn clock and the game ends. The hope is that the winning team will miss one or two of their free throws and the other team will get an extra possession to make a three pointer and catch up. Occasionally there will be a low IQ moment where the other team will inbound the ball and no one will pressure them, no one will foul, and the game will just end. The most clever way this strategy is implemented is with the hack a shack strategy. Shaquille O'Neal was not a good free throw shooter, so at the end of the game, teams would leave Shaq open, then they would foul him. He would go to the free throw line, and he'd usually miss one or two of the free throws, and the other team would get the ball back without losing much time on the clock. For San Antonio, once again, people are saying, as we immediately have a hack a shack call, I don't believe it. Five seconds in. No, but, but that was... But that's a joke, yeah. <laughs> well, of course it happened in the playoffs. Shaq is not the only player that hack a -shack has been implemented against. DeAndre Jordan is a notoriously bad free throw shooter. Also Ben Wallace, possibly one of the worst free throw shooters of all time. And more recently, Ben Simmons. You might as well give a guy a free shot who can't make a shot or doesn't have a lot of confidence. Another clock management trick is, at the end of the game, if you're winning, let that ball roll. Let the ball be inbounded, and if you're the point guard and you're not being pressured, let it roll because the clock will burn and the shot clock won't start. If you are winning, it always serves you to burn clock. Whether it's the third quarter and you're up one, it will always serve you to have less time on the clock if you are winning. John Morant does this a lot. I'm going to show a clip of John Morant doing it. Even though he's done it multiple times, he's aware that if the other team is losing, he wants to keep them losing and give them less time to make a basket. Streak lives on 13 straight games for LaMelo Ball with 20 points. They're just gonna let the clock continue to run. Nobody moving up on John Moran, so the game clock just continues to run. And the eight second count doesn't start until no. he picks it up, and the Hornets... I don't know what the Hornets are doing. If you're winning, it's always to your advantage to kill clock. If you're losing, you need to utilize every second on the clock to catch up or start winning. Next is situational or matchup based advantages. This is taking advantage of a player's weaknesses or limiting a player's strengths. We all know Trey Young is an incredible offensive player, but he is a faucet on defense. Whether it's his stature, his fatigue from so much offensive usage, or he just doesn't want to play defense, his team has to make up for him. A strategy that the Milwaukee Bucks used against Trey Young was letting him shoot from the logo and then sneaking past him on defense for an open outlet pass. Drew Holiday knew that Trey Young was going to watch his shot to see if it went in so he would run right past him and Brooke Lopez or Giannis would throw the ball down to him for an easy layup. A strategy that LeBron uses against Ben Simmons or other players without a lot of confidence from the three-point line is not guarding him. That would give them an extra defender for all the other players if they leave Ben Simmons open because they know he's not going to shoot. One strategy the teams use that don't have a guy big enough or strong enough to cover Giannis is a double team, forcing him to make a play or make an awkward pass. Giannis is actually the most double team player in the league. 34% of all the Milwaukee Bucks offensive possessions or possessions, Giannis is double teamed more than anyone else in the NBA. Oftentimes it doesn't really matter because Giannis knows that there's going to be a guy coming in for help defense to double team him. And so as soon as he gets the ball, he cuts right to the basket and dunks it. He's hard to stop even if you double team him. These are all basketball IQ elements that involve preparation or preparing a style of basketball that's going to be utilized beneficially. That was so stupid. I didn't like that, but I'm gonna leave it in. Next is cheekiness. I wrote my own definition of cheekiness. This is what it means to me. It means you know the rules of the game well enough to do something unconventional or what you might consider if you're on the other side, cheating. Let's start with Chris Paul calling out Jordan Bell for having his shirt untucked. This resulted in a delay of game and a technical foul. OKC got the ball back and they also got free throws. The next two are Jason Kidd, one when he was a coach and one when he was a player. When you are a coach, your basketball IQ is all you have. Here's a 
a clip of Jason Kidd running into Mike Woodson, who is on the court. Jason Kidd knows coaches aren't supposed to be on the court. And if they're on the court, it results in a technical foul. So he runs in to Mike Woodson, drawing attention to the fact that he is there. He is on the court. And the Atlanta Hawks get a technical foul called on them. The next is when he was coaching the Brooklyn Nets. Jason Kidd ran out of timeouts, so he spilled a drink on the court, basically giving the Nets an extra timeout and enough time for him to draw up the play. I respect a good grift as much as anyone, but I actually really don't like this. It doesn't seem right to me. It doesn't sit well with me. Here's another simple basketball IQ move is when the opposing team is caught slipping, you bounce the ball off their back and go up for an easy layup. Ben Simmons, smart guy. The ball in. He uh, bounced it off the backside of Fardwell. Not a lot of confidence, but very smart. After this is in-game instinct. These are just the things that you either consciously do or you subconsciously do that give you an advantage. Subconsciously, maybe something like you know where the ball is going to bounce or you know what defenders typically do and you're able to limit the instinct of the defender or know where the ball is going to be before anyone else does. Let's look at this play with LeBron. LeBron knows where Timothy Mozgov is, so when the ball comes to him, he bats it right to him while the Milwaukee Bucks are waiting around for him to get gather the ball, Mozgov is already dunking on him. Or check out this compilation from the Spurs who always make the extra pass. They're aware that if someone is closing out on a guy making a three-point shot, with their offense there is always a guy that is open along the perimeter for a completely wide open shot. Here's a play by Jokic. Jokic gently throws the ball to Rajon Rondo who is out of bounds while Jokic is losing bounce and falling out of bounds. This is cool because it's a real recognized real moment because Rajon Rondo is one of the highest basketball IQ players in NBA history. If you don't like that, Leave a comment and tell me I'm wrong. Get, get my engagement up. I don't care. Rondo is really the only player I know that can consistently get players to bite on his fake passes. Ray John Rondo would do a fake pass knowing full well he was either going to make a different pass or go up for a layup, and players would fall for it every time. These are my favorite type of basketball IQ examples or different types of basketball IQ. If you think I left one out, leave a comment, let me know. Ultimately, I'm baiting you into leaving a comment so you'll get the, uh, the algorithm will go and all that stuff. But either way, thanks for being here. Eat a corn dog be good to your mothers.